Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Sin Stuff. Today we're going to be talking about balanced versus unbalanced cables. Come on up next. Welcome back. Sorry I haven't had a, a video out for a couple of weeks. Uh, I was, well, I was in Punta Cana. What can I say? So much misinformation and misunderstanding about what balanced cables are and do you need to use them and can you mix and match them balanced with unbalanced and, and people just really don't seem to have an understanding about what balanced cables are, why you'd use them. So I'm going to try and get into the a little bit of the weeds and the nitty gritty behind uh, the electrical theory behind these cables and then explain how you can use them and, and ways that I use of intermixing them. Let's start by talking about electrical signals. So let's say we have two wires. We have a ground and then a signal. You can't just have one wire that's just a single conductor because you can't have electricity flow through one wire and then just go nowhere. Well, you can, but that's called lightning. In any case, what we're talking about, you actually have to have a, 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 pa a complete circuit. So it goes down one, comes da back through another, and that's why on a simple, regular, consumer-level audio cable, you have two conductors. And if you have a look, you can actually see there's, on this one, there's two separate conductors. One is the ground, and that's the sleeve part right here. And then the tip contains the signal. Reference to ground. That's great. We can plug this into the synthesizer over there, and the other end plug it into our mixer, and the two devices will then share the same ground because their grounds are connected together, and then the signal goes from one along to the other. As an added bonus, the cable itself is actually shielded. It uses that ground and wraps around the outside of the cable, so the center conductor in the middle, which carries the signal, is protected from outside interference by that shield through the inside of the cable. That way, if we have a power cable or something lying close to it, where it's going to induce a noise or an extraneous signal into the cable, it'll help reject that. Now, if you might remember back to high school physics, you'll know that when you pass a current through a wire, it creates an electrical field. Just like a speaker, you put a current through the coil inside the voice coil of the speaker, it creates a, a, a magnetic field. And then because there's a magnet in the speaker, that magnetic field interacts with that magnet and it forces the cone to move in and out. Microphones are the exact same thing, except in reverse. So you have a diaphragm connected to a coil and a magnet. And when you speak, it vibrates the diaphragm, which moves that coil, which induces electricity in the, in the coil because it's interacting with the magnetic field of the magnet. And then your amplifier picks up that current and amplifies it. So if we have a power wire, especially one that's carrying a lot of current, think lights or uh, power amplifiers, the more current and, and voltage, but the more overall power going through that wire, the larger the magnetic field around the outside of that wire as it's going through. And particularly, if you have a wire that's coiled up like this, now you've got an even stronger magnetic field building up there. So if you have power wires that are running along, and then right next to them, you have your audio cables running along, guess what's gonna happen? All the noise from the power cable is gonna create a magnetic field. That magnetic field is gonna induce a signal in your audio, and now you're gonna have hum and noise in your audio because you ran the wires next to each other. And the absolute worst thing you could do is this. So now you've created an electromagnet, and you're it basically it's a transformer. You're moving a signal from the electrical wire into another wire. And it doesn't even have to be electrical wire. It could be PA speaker wires. And if, you're, if you've got coiled wires like that anywhere close to each other, you're going to be inducing, moving the signal from one wire to the other wire without them even physically touching. That's basically the, the concept of how a transformer works. So anytime you have power and audio having to intersect, make sure you do it at right angles. So here's our power cable here, and here's our audio cable. So even though you don't want to do this, so maybe you could have them coming along like this and just kind of intersect an S turn like that. So you have right angles where it's coming. I mean, this is not great, but if you, the, you do have to have cables that move, that have to go in the same place, this is what you want to do in order to, to reduce the amount of power transfer from one to the other. So what does this have to do with balanced and unbalanced cables? Well, if you think about it, you have a ground and then you have a signal. So if you induce 
an electrical field or a current into the ground shield of this cable, you're changing the reference signal for this signal. So if, even if the, the signal going through here is zero, there's no signal, it's dead silence, and you put a magnetic field next to the ground and induce a current, well, the, diff the signal that the amplifier or the mixer sees is the difference between ground and signal. So it doesn't care whether the signal's moving up and down or the, the ground's moving up and down. As long as it sees a difference between the two, it's gonna interpret that as a signal. So if you have an unbalanced cable and you induce some kind of electromagnetic interference along somewhere, and it could be uh, EMF, it could be RF from a radio transmitter, it could be anything of that sort. As long as you've got a difference between the ground and the tip, or the, the ground and the signal, now you've got noise. So balanced cables are trying to get around that. And the way they do that is by having an extra conductor. And it could be something like this, or like a quarter inch, or it could be XLR like this. So now that we have three conductors, we still have the ground. The ground is still covering the, the uh, cable itself as a shield to try to reject interference. But in, it's, the, the ground is no longer part of the audio signal. It's there just to work as shielding. Instead, we have a positive representation of the signal and a negative representation of the signal. So if you imagine we have a synthesizer that's putting out a sine wave, this is gonna be your sine wave, and then the second conductor on the sleeve is gonna be an inverted sine wave that's exact inverted copy of this signal. So you have, the, you have basically plus and minus. Now, why do we do that? Because we want to be able to reject noise. What we're doing is basically rejecting common noise that is common to all of these. So if we induce a current in here, let's say we lay this next to a power line and the power line magnetism from the, that power line uh, induces some, some signal into these wires. It's going to induce some into the ground, okay. It's going to also induce some, because you know grounding shielding is not perfect, but it's going to induce some into the negative as well as the positive at the same time. And the idea is that it's going to induce the same signal, the same noise into both the negative and the positive. Once we get to the other end of this wire, the mixer is going to take that signal that's coming in, it's going to take the negative, it's gonna flip it over upside down and then add it to the positive. The end result is it expects that all it's going to see is the original signal. If we have induced an extra signal, say noise, onto the negative and the positive, once that gets to the mixer end and we flip the negative version of the signal, it also flips that noise. So let's say we have a signal on the positive that is, we'll call it uh, plus two, and the signal on the negative is minus two. Ground is ground, it's zero. So we're going to induce noise onto this that is, I don't know, let's call it one. So now, because we've induced noise on all of these, our positive instead of a two is gonna have a three, and our negative instead of a minus two is gonna have a minus one. So now we've got a three and a minus one, where originally we had two and minus two. The amplifier, the op amps in the, in the receiving amplifier or mixer or whatever it is you're sending the signal to, is going to take those signals going to take that negative signal, invert it, and then add it back onto the positive signal. So if we have a three on the positive and we have a negative one on the negative and we add those together, what do we get? A two, which is the original signal. And the noise, which was the one, is rejected. It goes away. Now nothing is perfect because the amount of noise that's injected to both the, the positive and the negative portion of the balance cable is never going to be exactly the same. And anytime you have something that injects some noise into the positive and negative that is not quite the same, that's gonna end up as noise, but it's orders of magnitude less than you would get from an unbalanced cable. That's why you really want to use balanced cables anytime you can, because the noise rejection is just so much better than unbalanced cables. There's another problem though. What happens if we have our amplifier or mixer at one end of a room plugged into a socket, and then we have a synthesizer at the other end of the room, maybe on the stage, plugged into a different socket, and they have a ground potential between them, which I, they're definitely going to have because 
the ground is never going to be the same on every outlet. It depends on wiring in the wall, what you have plugged into it. So you could end up with some differential on those two grounds. Now, if you have your cable set up, it's plugged in at one end, you have a ground here, and it's plugged in into your mixer, and, and that ground is plugged in there. Now you've got two separate grounds going to two separate devices. You've got the ground on the synthesizer, the ground on the, on the mixer. You've also got the ground connected from the audio chain. That means we have a perfect ground directly from the synthesizer to the mixer and an imperfect ground through the power of the, the that's actually powering the devices. If we don't have balanced cables, that means that gr differential in ground is gonna be injected directly into the signal. That's why it's so important if you're using unbalanced cables to make sure all of your devices, synths, mixers, everything is plugged into the same outlet if at all possible. Use a power strip if you can. Better off using balanced cables to get away from that. Now what happens if you have a, a, a connection like balanced here and it's unbalanced over there? Can you plug in an unbalanced cable into a balanced connection? Certainly. If you look at the difference, the only difference is an extra conductor. And when we plug in to the mixer, we have three little arms that touch each of these connectors. And then if we plug this one in, the ground and the negative are going to be touching together. So it basically means that for the negative, you're just gonna be using ground. Ground is tied to negative and it will work. However, you'll still have the problem with noise because you no longer have that summation and, and subtraction that's being done on the balanced signal to get rid of that noise. So it, it doesn't hurt anything to use unbalanced cables or unbalanced connections in a balanced system. Several of the old synthesizers I have don't have balanced connections out and actually some of the, the newer lower cost synthesizers still don't have balanced connections because it's expensive to create the op amp circuitry uh, to actually create a balanced output. How can you get around that? Well, there's a couple different ways. One is use a DI box because a DI box basically decouples the signals using a transformer. So you have at one end, your unbalanced signal coming in and the ground and signal go directly into the coils of a transformer, changes it into magnetism, which affects another coil, changes it back into electricity. And at that side of the DI box, we now have the positive negative coming from the transformer plus the ground, which it uses to ground the device itself. That way we can use a balanced connection, get the benefits of having a balanced cable and still plug it into a uh, unbalanced synthesizer output. The second way you can get around this is something that I've used a number of times and that's to actually modify one of these cables. And what I will do is I will take my cable like this where I, I switch it from a, a quarter inch TRS into an XLR and I will cut the ground at this end. I'll actually unscrew this here and this one's uh, actually shrink wrapped, so you can't see it, unfortunately, but uh, I will cut the cable and leave the ground unconnected at this end. That means that I'm taking the ground entirely from the mixer end. It's still protecting and shielding the cable because it's grounded from this end, but there's no actual connection to that ground here. And then instead of the, the ring here, which is the negative, I will take that and I will take the wire that used to be connected to that and connect it to the ground. So now the output of the synthesizer, which is the synthesizer unbalanced output is putting a signal between the tip and the ground, is changing that into what the mixer is thinking is a signal between the, the plus and the minus. And the ground is just connected to nothing. Most of the time that works. And I actually have several of my old classic synths, like the SH-101 is hooked up that way. I think so is the Poly-6. Uh, and you do have to do a bit of modification yourself to do that, but it does work. Uh, in some cases, depending on the power supplies used in the synthesizer, you may end up with noise, you may end up with some ground loops, and if that's the case, then you have to revert to a DI box. All right, I hope that clears up some of the questions I've had on balanced versus unbalanced cables. My entire studio is balanced, uh, and I really made a point of that because I had a lot of noise problems on my old studio, but uh, it's made a huge difference with this one. And as a result, I have virtually no noise in any of my synthesizers today, which I really love. I hope this was of some use to you. If you do like what you saw, please click like, subscribe, blah, blah. You know the drill. It, it helps us out when you do. Not only do you get notified of our new videos, but it helps recommend videos 
that we've done to other people like you who might be interested in this kind of content. Thanks for watching.